I'm Dr. Rachel Dolan, a movement disorder specialist and vice president of medical communications at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Today I'll be talking about dystonia in Parkinson's. Dystonia is an involuntary muscle contraction or spasm that pulls a body part into an abnormal position. In Parkinson's, dystonia commonly causes a foot to turn in or toes to curl under. Many people describe it as a painful cramping sensation. It can affect just one body part, such as the arm or the neck, or it can involve the entire body. In Parkinson's, dystonia is a symptom, but dystonia can also be a disease in and of itself without any other symptoms. When it occurs on its own, dystonia is the third most common movement disorder. Not everyone with Parkinson's gets dystonia, but it can happen at any point in the course of disease. For people who do have dystonia, it can also come on at different times throughout the day. Many people will notice it in the morning before they take their first dosage of medication, or when medication wears off during the day before the next dose of medication is due. And during these times, other Parkinson's symptoms like tremor, slowness, and stiffness are also usually present. Dystonia also is more common in younger people who have Parkinson's. In people who are younger than 40 or 50 years old, it may even be the first symptom of Parkinson's. Sometimes people with young or early onset Parkinson's first notice dystonia during exercise and then later develop other symptoms of Parkinson's like tremor or stiffness that leads to the diagnosis. There are several treatment options for dystonia and Parkinson's and it's important to work with your doctor to find the best regimen for you. Depending on when dystonia happens during the day, you might adjust the dose of levodopa take the medication more often, or switch to a longer acting formulation. Another option may be to add a medication like Artane or trihexaphenidyl, which may specifically target dystonia. Sometimes doctors inject botulinum toxin or Botox into overactive muscles to temporarily weaken them and lessen dystonia. For people with significant dystonia and other Parkinson's symptoms, deep brain stimulation may be an option. And for most people with dystonia, physical therapy, which includes stretching and strengthening exercises, can also be helpful. Researchers are still working out the exact causes of dystonia, but there are overlaps between the causes of Parkinson's and dystonia. The basal ganglia, which is the brain circuit that produces normal movement, is affected in both Parkinson's and dystonia. Research into both of these diseases can lead to better understanding of both Parkinson's and dystonia and better therapies for both. You can learn more about dystonia and other topics in Parkinson's by visiting our website.